Hey guys, it's man 89 here, making a video for bygames.ps and this is my review of Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite was supposed to be a Series X launch title, but after a disappointing reveal, 343 Industries listened to the fans and decided to delay the game by a whole year. So the question we're gonna be answering today is, has the game been improved enough to justify buying its campaign for 60 bucks or should you stick with the free to play multiplayer? Let's start this review with the graphics. I reviewed the game on Xbox Series X and whether you play single player or multiplayer, you'll quickly notice that Halo Infinite doesn't look next gen at all. I mean, it's definitely a huge improvement over what we saw last year. The game now has way better textures, but it's a clear downgrade from all the previous E3 trailers, especially in terms of lighting. The draw distance is ridiculously low and it's particularly noticeable when using a vehicle. All around, while playing Halo Infinite, nothing really took my breath away, but that doesn't mean this isn't the crispest and sharpest looking Halo game ever. Moving on to the animations, I love the physics based animations on this game. The way explosions send enemies flying away is always so satisfying to see. Also, the way they react when you shoot their limbs or when you throw a grenade at them is really good. Now, during cutscenes, I don't know what's wrong with the game, but animations, especially facial animations, seem laggy or choppy, which ruins the immersion. Luckily, the devs said they were already working on a fix, so maybe in a couple of days, we won't see this issue anymore. And now, let's take a closer look at the performance. There are two graphics modes to choose from. Quality mode runs at 60 FPS in a dynamic 4K resolution. Performance mode, on the other hand, targets 120. 20 frames per second at the cost of graphics, and in my opinion it's not worth it cause the game rarely runs at the targeted frame rate anyways, so you're better off picking quality mode. If you're on Series S or Xbox One X though, you get to choose between 30 and 60 FPS. Last but not least, on the regular Xbox One you only get 30 FPS. And by the way, you should know that Halo Infinite has slight performance issues on all platforms, so keep that in mind. Now let's move on to the sound. Music has always been Halo's strength and Halo Infinite is no exception. The sound effects are also great but footsteps and explosions seem to be way too quiet. On the other hand, the voice acting is pretty good so I'll just let you listen to the game audio for 15 seconds before we talk about the gameplay. This is all her fault! It isn't Cortana. Tell him. But it's classified. Halo Infinite's main new thing is its open world, featuring a full day-night cycle and plenty of side missions like distress calls, towers and forward operating bases or fobs to capture. So let's dive deeper into the gameplay and let's start with the good stuff. The addition of a grappling hook made the gameplay feel fresh again with some new cool moves that feel and look so good when executed properly. And it seems to be pretty rare to have decent AI in games nowadays so I thought this was worth mentioning. Cause even on the regular difficulty level, you're gonna die a lot. Most enemies are challenging and they feel kinda smart, apart from brutes who tend to be extremely dumb but I don't know if that's intentional or not since, you know, they're called brutes. Speaking of enemies, the way they react depending on the limb you shoot is pretty good. I also like how they dive when you throw a grenade at them and some of the stuff they say is hilarious. By the way, you can improve your abilities through a skill tree and after the first hour you gain access to the open world section and that's where the story kinda takes a break and it gets mostly presented to you through audio logs that you can find scattered around the world. Now when it comes to multiplayer, it supports crossplay so you can play it with other Xbox players and PC users as well. Speaking of PC, Halo Infinite has keyboard and mouse support, for those of you who don't want to play with the controller. All game modes are fun to play, but there aren't that many maps available right now. Custom maps would have helped a lot, but sadly, Forge mode won't come out until almost a whole year. And that takes us to the bad stuff, cause there's no co-op mode yet either, which is a huge disappointment. After a long wait, looks like we'll still have to wait some more. Another disappointing thing is that there is only one biome, so after a couple of hours you'll feel the lack of variety in terms of environment to explore. On the other hand, the amount of freedom and possible approaches allowed by Halo Infinite's open world make this one of the most enjoyable Halo games ever. Which takes us to the fun factor. When I played Halo Infinite's multiplayer for the first time, I didn't really have any expectations. I just wanted to try the game out. And you know what? I haven't had that much fun playing an FPS in a very long time. But now that I've played the campaign, I have to say it was really enjoyable and fun to play, but not as much as the multiplayer. I'd love to play the campaign and split screen co-op, but 
but like I said, that's not available yet. So if you're mostly interested in co-op, then maybe don't buy the game just yet. Speaking of which, let's talk about the value for money. $60 for a 10 hour long main story experience and let's say 20 hours if you want to do all the side missions as well, might sound like a little too much and if the multiplayer part was also included it would have made buying the game even more worth it. I'm not gonna complain about multiplayer being free though, that's awesome. So if I were you I'd probably only get the campaign through game pass or if you want to keep your games forever and you can grab Halo Infinite for 50 bucks or less then go for it. Even though it suffers from a severe lack of environmental variety, an okay story at best and no co-op at launch, Halo Infinite is still extremely fun to play, looks good, sounds awesome and it's the best first person shooter of 2021 and that's why I'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10. With co-op and a couple of patches, this could easily be a 9. And that's gonna be it for my Halo Infinite review. If you played the game, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. And if you guys wanna get all the games you want for cheap, head over to buygames.ps, the best website that sells PlayStation and Xbox games for amazingly low prices, and they're the only ones that offer a lifetime warranty on all of their products. Their link is in the description, so check them out. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. It's been Hitman89. See you guys very soon.